To most people, the name Mickey Thompson means this. Off-road trucks roaring over man-made courses at stadiums across America. But to the people who know motorsports, Mickey Thompson is a true legend. A man who revolutionized the world of speed. Until the day of his still unsolved murder, Mickey Thompson pushed racing's limits as far as he could. As Great Baskerville of Hot Rod Magazine says, Mickey Thompson was, was probably the most innovative, innovative hot rodder of all time. I don't think he ever heard or ever thought of the, name, the word uh, failure. He just got in there and tried it, and, and, and a lot of things have failed, but a lot of work. Funny cars brought Mickey his most consistent success. In one year, his racing team would win 164 of 172 races. Today, Mickey Thompson is remembered not just for first place finishes, but also for the first he contributed to racing. He designed the first slingshot dragster. He built and drove the first piston-powered car to go 400 miles per hour. He shocked Indianapolis with the first aerodynamically designed racer. He invented the wide oval tires that it and the cars that followed would run on. He was the first to put a V8 engine in an off-road car. And he took off-road racing out of the desert and into the stadium. He was driven. He was, uh, like I said, visionary. That's probably the best word to describe you know, what my dad could see into the future. He had the ability to come up with these ideas, and not only the ability to come up with the ideas, but to make them happen. Today, Danny Thompson is making things happen on the racing circuit his dad created. And he still remembers how his father approached Los Angeles Coliseum officials with the idea. And he says, what I'd like to do, he says, just listen to me, bear with me here. I'd like to take 1,100 sheets of plywood, cover that field, and then I'd like to bring in 25 million pounds of dirt, put it all over your field, we'll build jumps, bumps, right-hand turns, left-hand turns, and then I'm going to turn around and take 50,000 to 60,000 people and bring them in here to watch this. And I think the commissioner was just kind of... These grand ideas grew out of the big dreams of a little boy. Started uh, racing soapbox derbies and, and things like that, taking the motor out of my grandmother's, his mother's wash machine, and bolting it on one thing or another so i mean from the time he was very very young it, it, it was there it was uh, he was born with it and by the time he was nine he knew exactly what he wanted they were on a cross-country trip on vacation and they stopped at bonville salt flats and i guess he got the bug from that time that he wanted to to go there and break the world on speed record almost 20 years later he would try his 555 car nearly broke 300. Mickey would return with Challenger, a car he built in his backyard with junkyard parts, virtually all by himself. A non-engineering person took four Pontiac engines, four separate transmissions, four separate throttle bodies, and was able somehow to connect all that stuff together. And here you are shifting four transmissions and synchronizing four motors and everything all at one time. Mickey was so driven that even dangerous high winds weren't going to stop him. Mick, they don't want us to go. Winds are bad. No, no, I want to go now. The winds are two or three over the limit. Tell them I want to go now. I can drive to it. He was not a, not a person that liked to hear that, oh, I can't do it, or it's impossible to do. He just turned around and do it himself. And by doing it himself, Mickey Thompson drove Challenger to a new land speed record of 406 miles per hour. But the man who said nothing is impossible would later face his greatest challenge, the result of racing not on land, but on water. My dad held on the steering wheel. He went up in the air. And when he came back down, the boat was coming back up as my dad was coming back down into the seat. And it crushed his spine. And they said he'd never walk again. Of course, Mickey would not only walk again, he would race again. But the hard-headed determination that brought him back would also cause him trouble. His innovative IndyCar was challenged so heavily by officials that it was forced to run as a shell of its original design. And when he put a 550 horsepower engine in an off-road racer, 
there was an uprising of protest. The car becomes competitive now once it becomes big and heavy and dangerous to run against. I'm not going to put my car on the same track with your car again. A lot of people couldn't see what his long-term visions were, and a lot of times he didn't explain them because he didn't feel like he had to. But the bottom line was it was for the betterment always of the sport. Ultimately, they would come around. And when Mickey's streak of bad luck left him unqualified for off-road race of champions, the other drivers acknowledged his contributions and voted to let him run. Okay, Mickey, run. He couldn't share in the purse, and he had to start last. But this was the guy who knew nothing was impossible. And that was one of the first races he'd won in a long time in a single-seat type off-road car. And uh, so it, all, it meant a lot to all of us. And with that, it's my great honor to accept this award for my dad. And thank you very much. Mickey's induction into the Motorsports Hall of Fame recognized his legacy to racing. Today, that legacy can be found on any drag strip, racetrack, salt flat, or desert floor. Anywhere a man puts motor to the test of speed. And it can be found in his son, who's carrying on what his father began. Danny Thompson's his own man, but he knows from where he came. I'm very, very proud to be called Mickey's boy.